we're joined by columnist Adam Zivo, who just returned from Odessa, Ukraine, and we discuss the bombing of Kyiv's main children's hospital. Adam, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me on the show. Now, how exactly is it possible for Russia to strike the capital of Kyiv? Well, unfortunately, Western weapon, weapon shipments have been delayed for several months uh, because the Republicans blockaded further U.S. aid starting in November. And that had a significant impact on Ukraine's ability to defend itself. Uh, oftentimes, we talk about what that did on the front lines with Ukrainian soldiers not having enough artillery, uh, basically being outgunned 10 to 1. But what is less discussed is the impact that had on the air defenses of cities that are farther away from the front line. Unfortunately, these air defenses ran low on ammo, uh, which allowed Russia to, of course, uh, hit these cities more frequently and in a very devastating manner. Now, on top of that, Russia has improved its missile strike ca capabilities uh, and, for example, implemented technology that makes it harder for anti-air defense, defenses to hit these missiles. Uh, so now cities all across Ukraine are vulnerable to attack in a way that they've never been before which leads to devastating impacts on civilians. And how would the Ukrainians need to be able to better prevent these types of attacks? Well, I mean, unfortunately, there's not much they can do aside from ask the West for more aid. Uh, there, there's, I mean, we, we have to keep in mind that though the West claims to be a stalwart supporter of Ukraine, what it has given to Ukraine basically amounts to only crumbs of its overall arsenal. Uh, in the United States, the amount of money that has been given to Ukraine is equal to about 5% of the defense budget per year. Uh, so you hear these big numbers, billions and billions and billions of dollars. It doesn't actually translate into a lot. Uh, the United States is giving its old material, its old weapons. Uh, and I think that there is much more room to give the Ukrainians the weapons that they need to not only defend themselves, but to also cripple one of the West's main geopolitical rivals. Now, you mentioned asking the West for support, but how do you think that the hospital bombing will impact UK Ukraine's request for more equipment and um, their case with EU countries like Canada and the United States? Well, I think it's a very poignant illustration of the need for this aid. And I think that unfortunately, Ukraine has fallen off the front page and now is on the back pages when it comes to the international news. People forget about Ukraine. And I think in this way, Ukraine has actually been a victim of its own success because it was able to quarantine the Russians into the east and south. It gave the impression that this is just a regional conflict without global significance. Uh, and so people forget that if Ukraine falls, that means renewed wars in other parts of Europe. Uh, and I think that I would hope that this hospital bombing will shake some people out of their complacency and remind people that Ukraine is still struggling and that there needs to be more help. Um, and what is your assessment on where the war stands now? Do you think it's possible for Ukraine to effectively stop the invasion and win back the ter territory that has been taken by Russian forces? Unfortunately, I'm not qualified to say, and there's too much up in the air here, uh, if the West can provide more ample support, then it's possible. If the West continues slow dripping support, then the prospects here are very dim. I know that in Ukraine, there is a sense of pessimism and a sense of betrayal. The West said that it would stand with Ukraine, but only gave them enough weapons to not be taken over while not giving them enough to decisively end this war and take back their occupied territories. Now, there's been the conversation in Canada right now where it's why are we constantly helping Ukraine when Canada's not taking care of Canada? Um, so for Canadians who don't understand why Ukraine's fight matters, what would you say to those people? Well, I would say that Ukraine's survival is integral to Canada's national security in two ways. Uh, first of all, if Russia is able to expand more into Eastern Europe, that destabilizes the entire global world order. Uh, and we are a part of NATO and we can't just freeload there. So that means that we would end up being more entangled in Eastern European conflicts as they escalate. The second piece here, and this is less understood, is that our main vulnerability security wise is our Arctic sovereignty. The Arctic is warming up, ice is melting there, and that is opening up very valuable new shipping channels. The Northwest Passage, for example, is expected to serve as a very profitable seasonal alternative to the Panama Canal. Uh, so as the Arctic has been warming up, it's become mil more militarized. 
uh, more contested. So in 2022, Russia didn't just act aggressively to the West, it started actually remilitarizing its northern bases. And we can expect that Russia will try to infringe upon our Arctic sovereignty in partnership with China in about 10 to 30 years. Uh, so it makes sense for us to cripple Russia now, rather than pay much more money to defend our North against a stronger threat.